I made 100 players survive in an ancient civilization to see what would happen. What they don't know is that they aren't alone on these islands. From ancient killer golems, banished dragons, to even shark infested waters. Players are set to hardcore mode so they only have one life. Also, these videos take a long time to make so if you can hit that subscribe button, it'll mean the world to me. The ancient civilizations were split into three islands, the Egyptians, the Aztecs, and the Greeks. Each with their own harsh terrains, threats, and disadvantages. We have a couple perks too. Phase 1, the Grace Period. Each ancient civilization can't go to the other's islands, or PvP with members outside of their own civilization. This time is meant to give survivors a chance to get resources, build up their nation, and grow in power. The first of the ancient civilizations were the Greeks, who ended up within a chaparral biome, which had plenty of trees, rivers, and mountains as their natural terrain. Luckily for them, there was lots of seeds and water to grow crops in the long run, and there was also plenty of wood to go around for all the survivors. So it didn't take very long for them to start working on food by collecting seeds and searching for crates filled with food and other materials. Bro. Dude, I'm literally gonna die. To keep their people organized, they quickly selected Mello as the Greeks team leader, seeing as he's won previous Minecraft Civilization events of mine in the past. The area that they were brought into was covered in mobs and was raining down hard. Due to the danger in the area, a lot of Greek players were then separated in the midst of trying to survive. While the majority of people ended up searching for some quick and easy shelter, this is an ancient Greek city found abandoned at the top of one of these mountains. There was a bit of food, iron, and other materials to help them progress as a nation. Shortly after, the rain cleared up, and some of the mobs were going back into hiding, allowing the survivors to run free with one less problem up their sleeve. Moving away from the main group, a Greek structure was also located by some survivors around the middle island. This place had heaps of iron, food, and gear for a whole entire group. Now, despite their abundance in food at this point, not all ancient civilizations were given this type of resource. This is the second ancient civilization, the Egyptians. They were located on a harsh desert with very very little amount of wood, food, or any resources crucial to early development of any nation, making this island the harshest environment out of all three. Despite them lacking basic resources, the materials that the desert contained was the abundance of gold and treasures within the pyramids that were found throughout this biome. Each of these pyramids carried a loot room, often with things like iron and even diamonds. Beyond that, there was also a port town that the survivors discovered pretty quickly, which held a bit of food for them to share. Not a lot though, they're kinda like rats in a sewer if you really think about it. Despite this being ancient Egypt, there were actually three groups forming within Egypt. One led by Xander, one led by Arrow, and another led by Mu MC. The rising of groups with multiple people wanting power all within one of these civilizations? What could go wrong? This is Xander, who was in charge of a group known as the White Moon. Adrian, I'm <laughs> <laughs> who had managed to gather 10 to 15 members. They were treasure hunters in search for loot within the structures hidden deep within the sand. There was also one of them that only spoke in Animal Crossing. Give me, give me <laughs> flint. There you go. I can't even make this up. I had no idea what this man was saying to me. Then they found Tonk. The person speaking in Animal Crossing was actually hoarding dry apples from the rest of the team. Survivors were also realizing how scarce food was in the hot desert, so they began making farms to grow sustainable food sources. But even so, how many will actually survive? This player Florix has already gotten the hunger effect. I'm afraid it's inevitable. There has to be a bit of blood. After a bit more exploring, the Egyptians also realized they are right next to a port city of theirs. There was also a massive cruise ship out in the middle of the ocean. Whoa, what is hey, it? Dude, dude. Do they see what's in the ship? They decided to go and explore it, realizing that there was a barrier that sliced through it, and only a small chunk of it was actually accessible. They also found some cargo crates left behind. This is like just sad. It's upset that you managed to empty the entire ship. Come on, I don't even have stuff. But the question is, how did the cruise ship end up on the islands of ancient civilizations? More on that later. The last of the three civilizations was the Aztec civilization, which landed on a wet marsh, with very tall trees, high mountains, and tons of rivers. Alongside this, they were fortunate enough to have the most food amongst all three civilizations, from melons, cookies, to even arteries. They have it all. Are you guys doing good on food? Uh, yeah. We don't, okay. we don't win the awesome. Similar to the Egyptians, they had two groups within the Aztecs, one being the cave dwellers led by a brave survivor named Agent, who discovered that some of the loot there was left behind by the natives. I found the shroom suit. Found what? The shroom suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. The white powder and the archery, bro. <laughs> you know, the fine cuisine. Also, why is this called stalker behavior? Because look what you're doing with it. Uh, 
The cave dwellers main objective is to live their lives out in the mines, exploring and stacking up for the fight they fear will soon come sooner than later. And from how things are going at the moment, they aren't too far off from the reality. Aside from the cave dwellers, there was a main group who just went with being known as the Aztecs. They were led by Nut Daily. Yeah, that's his username. They were still in search for a place to set up for the Aztecs' official base of operations. So instead, they spent the time exploring for structures. What they ended up locating was an ancient Aztec city, abandoned and left to rot to Mother Nature's will. Tons of iron, gear, and supplies there for their nation. There was a small island near the middle of the Aztec island. Oh, that's a lot of islands. This place was guarded by sharks. See, someone already found this place. Is that an Did you place the axolotl? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the sharks and stuff too and everything. Which housed also an axolotl named Stuart, the axolotl, which was left behind by one of the Aztecs. Why this place is of any importance in the first place is because behind this island was a gigantic ancient Aztec temple. This place carried things like diamond blocks, iron blocks, and housed tons of loot for the perfect start to a nation anyone could ever ask for. It didn't take long before they decided that's where they'd call home. Aside from this, there was also a volcano on the Aztec island which survivors were not informed about, which was also showing slight signs of pressure building up. The Aztecs may be in deep trouble if they don't discover it soon. With there being three ancient civilizations, they were each given a beacon. This would indicate their nation is still standing and under their own control. Each nation is to protect their own beacons, and if it's stolen, they are under the control of the nation that has ownership of their beacon. These beacons were awarded to Arrow of Egypt, Mello of Greek, and Nut of Aztec. Looking back at the Egyptians, the group White Moon soon discovers that there is actually a civil war going on within their own people. And like we hope this guy that is getting killed won't There's friendly fire. There's friendly fire going on? Why is there friendly fire? Now despite them being in a grace period, what wasn't accounted for was people fighting others that were in the way regardless of if they were supposed to be on their same team or not. In more simpler terms, I didn't account for people killing their own nations. If you're interested in joining these civilization events, check out my pin tweet on my Twitter below. Now back to the chaos going on with the Egyptians population. This introduces one of the three groups of the Egypt team being the Scythers, a group that wasn't much in numbers but still posed as a threat in terms of gear and skill. Despite them having an advantage in keeping their fellow Egyptians alive, they decided it'd be best to eliminate them to steal their gear and food. What kind of monsters are these guys? Word soon spread to the other two groups owned by Xander and Arrow. White Moon asked about the civil war. If you guys prioritize like a farm, you'll probably be like one of the last Egyptians. <laughs> Actually, I think Wait, that's what? a guy. Should we, just become, should we all become farmers? Let's just Adrian, start. Yes, 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 follow me. Follow me. Um, follow me. I, I found something. Wait, guys, wait. Follow me. On another note, they were still exploring their own island in search for loot since they were treasure hunters. Soon they discovered the Sand Valley. H. Prepto found something. What? What did you find? What did you find? Is that the big valley? Oh, what the hell is that? Yeah, but like, will I die? Does that mean it's trapped? <laughs> I guess that means it's trapped. No, bro, I don't trust him, bro. I'm gonna walk in now. I'm, I'm gonna oh, just, 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 just. Oh, oh my team. god. Which is a huge rupture in the ground leading downwards where they found a camp and a tower on the other side. They were debating whether or not they should venture into there. Seeing as if they were attacked, they wouldn't have anywhere to run. Or well, who's <laughs> jumping down? <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. You know what there is down there? There's a blooming lush cave. Besiege the tower. Come on, boys. Down. Down. After a bit of discussing, they decided to make the voyage into the depths and back up into the campsite to find a bunch of loot left behind by a fellow treasure hunter. Looks like even the natives had people searching for treasure. Adrian, Adrian, come in. Where you at, boy? I'm not <laughs> eating your bloody <laughs> arteries. I don't want your arteries, boy. I told you. Stop giving me your arteries, man. The main thing they found in the chest was a book. A Greek book that contained a diary of the person they're taking loot from. It basically said that there was more that lies at the bottom of the valley, something hidden, something worth a lifetime, sadly, which led them wondering if they should dwell on what kind of hidden treasure was at the bottom of that valley in the first place. The next group we're yet to introduce is Arrow's group, who's been pretty good at these experiments. He's the leader of the last group out of the three that roamed the Egyptian desert. He was in the mines trying to stack up on diamonds to make sure he was well prepared for the civil war going up back on the surface. Some of your teammates are getting annihilated by like someone random yeah i know there's a civil war going on uh -huh. not the best <laughs> not the, we're not the best day right now <laughs> yeah do you have someone you trust up there uh yeah you could give it to like i hutch something which his teammates informed him about and this is the egyptian island above ground very low amounts of survivors actually in sight a lot of the survivors that weren't a part of these three main groups got slaughtered by the scythers this is where things took a turn for the worse remember how in phase one crossing to the other islands was supposed to be 
actually a thing that's disabled. We use barrier blocks to prevent this from happening. What I forgot to do was give these barriers a roof. This meant that if a player built up to the top of the barrier, they can easily hop over these barrier walls. So we began our investigation. Who went over the wall? Where did they go? And how big of a problem would this really be? We then met the culprit that utilized this method. It was ISO Shooter. He ended up somehow finding his way to the fourth island on the map. I haven't even mentioned anything about this place yet. It's supposed to be a banished land where all the sinners of each ancient civilization would basically go. Access to this place was received in phase two, but he found early access to it. You're not supposed to be down here yet. How are you down here? How'd you even get here? Uh, I built over the border. Oh, that was you. <laughs> Yeah, it was me. I see. I mean, hey, uh. Can I, uh, can I, can you give me a diamond pickaxe? I can't do that. But you can Come find on, diamonds please. around here. <laughs> what is that? It was loot that could be found in here in the netherite category. But with the good loot, there was also a good amount of danger. Dragons, magma creatures, and other things that you really don't want to mess with, at least not this early on. Making the place a very deadly place to end up alone. Since it was just him, I decided to let it slide. Being that he even made it out there alive in the first place. Then began a mini build event. The nation with the best build will be rewarded a loot crate containing diamonds and even netherite. The winner will be chosen at phase 3, giving them a bit more time to work on the structures. Back to the Greeks, Mello, who was the leader of the Greeks, ended up making what's known as the Elite Guard, which went with him on a long journey to collect the other stragglers which had been left behind during the beginning. Alright, come on. We're going back to the Colosseum. Forget this. We're going back. What they didn't account for is Nightfall so soon, which led them heading back to their base after finding a few more of their members. Once they reached back to home base, the sheer numbers that the Greeks held were immense. They didn't have enough gear to split amongst the nation's population, but had a good food source running around. They gathered quartz blocks left over from the other structures around the map in order to work on a wall that will protect them from enemies trying to evade. Luckily for them, they had a natural advantage, being that they were on top of a mountain and one of the main entrances was the sea. That's where the wall was gonna be. The Aztecs were also doing their own bit of building, sort of. It was more of collecting the stuff they can from the Aztec villages and bringing it back to the Aztec temple, which they called home. This began a world event specific to the Aztec island. Remember that volcano located at the top of their island? Yeah, it basically erupted. Lava was pouring from the top of the volcano, dripping downwards. Now, although this doesn't seem like it would affect the Aztec nation, which housed near the middle of the island, there was one thing it did did cause a massive forest fire. The magma that spewed out of the mountain lit the trees on fire and with a biome that has trees this close to one another, a forest fire is bound to cause some major problems, especially if they aren't aware of what had happened. There was even a structure known as the Aztec Skull that was soon to be engulfed by the lava, but I spoke too soon. Right as the volcano erupted, a player stumbled upon the volcano and ran back after realizing that they were in grave danger. Looks like they came in clutch. The area within the Aztec temple was a bit hollow but carried loot crates, and players explored that despite it being monster infested. Shortly after, phase 2, the PvP phase began. Borders will now be dropped, leading to the nations being able to explore the other islands besides their own ones. Near the end of this phase, there will be a scavenger hunt for netherite, which will also allow any groups that require an extra little boost. The Greeks have located two sheep that they were transporting back to their base, which would provide a good food source for any of the existing farms that they already have. Mello was also handed a book and read it. It contained a bit of lore as to what happened to the Greek natives. What book is it? I don't know, it's a diary. Where, where right? Right? Diary of Dr. Pen. Day yeah. was a Bro, what is this? And then they continued building the walls that covered the entrance to their base. Similar to the forest fire that occurred in the Aztec island, one of these trees within the Greek nation also began to combust into flames. This was really suspicious, since there wasn't any rain, which meant it wasn't from a lightning strike, and there was no enemies in the nation's sight. The Greeks soon went into suspicion of there being a traitor amongst their own teammates. This would lead to a distrust in a lot of the members, and overall distrust within the nation. Trust me, that's not a good thing to have. In the topic of forest fires, the Aztecs forest fire had finally reached the bottom of the volcano and soon begun the trees burning down to a crisp. I went to go consult the team leader of Aztecs to see what they were up to, since by now they must have heard about the volcano. But that was the least of their worries. Uh, we also saw like four Egyptians, I don't know, they, they were like full diamond gear. Base got killed, I killed by the Egypt. Yeah, Egypt's here, Egypt's here. We saw people, we started running. Uh, what? We found Egypt over there. We found you know what? Seeing as how everyone 
everyone else is, is really geared and stuff, I can give you guys a hint. You know the volcano on your island that erupted? Oh, yeah, we were at the volcano. Oh, yeah, we saw it, we saw it, yeah. Within the volcano that it erupted on your islands, there's gonna be diamond yeah. loot in there waiting for you. This was the first infiltration so far. Seems Egypt wanted to take out the Aztecs was the tip I gave them since they were heavily ungeared in comparison to the other teams. But were they really alone at the volcano of theirs? Meanwhile, in Egypt, Team White Sun was all ironed up and still exploring the valley. They found another book which read, Adrian, we found two interesting things. I found a book which says, I found this by a tower, which we're going back to, because it says apparently there's something like underneath the tower or something near it. It says, day 14, this desert seems endless. Heard rumors of something being underneath this area. Gonna check out tomorrow morning. So we're gonna go ahead there and okay, see. Okay. Adrian, is um, Adrian we, also found, we also found this book, which has every <laughs> single enchantment on. Oh, what? What the heck? Yo, how's the Civil War going though? Because I heard- Oh, Adrian is terrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've been, we literally did go jumped. Then they found prey amongst their own people as well. Wait, there's a guy over here. There's a guy. There's a guy. Him, him, Chase him. What the Come hell, on. man? Get him. I'm going to give you cookies if you stop. Good idea, Prato. Does anyone have a boat? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Christ, Christ. Are you joining us or not? It seems every Egyptian group was every group for themselves type of ordeal. But could you really blame them with the scythers going around? No one could be trusted. Egypt is literally in shambles. I put it on myself to help communicate with these two teams. The White Sun was suddenly split into two separate groups. One chasing the guy and the other half being on land, eyed down by a bloodthirsty shark. They were literally the only team having issues within their own group. It also seems that the White Sun also encountered the Scythers and called them bad roadmen. So we went to go check them out. The issue was it wasn't too clear if they ran into Arrow's group or the actual Scythers. This is Arrow's group on the shores of the Aztec island, sneaking around in preparation for a sneak attack. Remember the Aztec temple on this island? We gave the Aztecs a huge advantage by informing them that there are diamonds within the volcano that erupted on their island. Well, now the mission is retrieving said diamonds is in progress. A group of their strongest soldiers went up and built up, almost to the top of the mountain, not knowing that the diamonds were closer to the core of the volcano than the very top. Another thing that they weren't aware of is that Arrow and his group were already in the volcano, since the volcano is the closest location to the closest shore which the Egyptians would first encounter traveling to their island. But then they soon realized that there was a lot of Mobs, from magma creatures to even ancient golems. You don't want to mess with the ancient golems. These guys are protectors. They will defend whatever it is they're defending. After realizing this, there was two ancient golems at the entrance. They used to actually enter the inner core of the volcano, which they had to carefully dodge since their goal was to eliminate the Aztecs. And one of their scouts realized that there was a group of Aztecs right above them. The Aztecs at this time were slowly closing in via mining, and they found an opening to the inner volcano. Despite them not knowing how close they were to finding the Egyptians that are after them, they still went in with the information that there was four Egyptians with full diamond on the island, just not with them at the moment. The hidden mine that the Aztecs used was no longer hidden. Things were getting risky big time. Arrow and his group slowly approached the Aztecs group in high speed, which made things even worse is that they captured Aztecs beacon because all the guards they had left back at the Aztec temple were killed. Aztec thought they might be a part of team Egypt since technically Egypt can claim the Aztecs as theirs since they have their beacon, but what they did didn't realize was that the Egypts were in a civil war. They killed their own teammates. What makes them think the Aztecs could even have a chance at teaming with the Egyptians? Spoiler alert, there was zero chance. And the first person in the Aztecs expedition group was killed. No, are they Egypt? It's Egypt. It's Egypt, yo. Oh no. Whoa, wait, did they get, did they find us? No, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we're Egypt now since they take our, they took our ring. Oh, yo, someone's taking damage. Someone's taking damage. Oh, hello, guys. Egypt, Egypt. Uh, Egypt, Egypt. Oh, Egypt's at the top of you guys. Not daily, not daily. Egypt's up there. No, okay. Illyrio. Okay, cool. No, he died. Oh, I'm knocking him off. Knock him off. Yeah, the. I got him in lava. Like, block up the lava. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Walk up, oh, walk up, walk up, walk up. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Arrow's dead. Arrow's dead. Arrow's dead. He's dead. Wait, kill the other Egypt. Uh, not that easily. You guys <laughs> are okay. He clutched. That's crazy. This is no, nuts. Maybe another Egyptian's coming up. Whoa, oh my. Okay. Then another. Things went south, especially due to the sheer height of things. Arrow fell but clutched by the side of one of the rock pillars and ended up killing Nut Daily, the leader of Team Aztecs. For Team Aztecs, all that remained was the cave dwellers owned by Agent, still in the mines, keeping away from all the manslaughter. Speaking of which, we check up on the cave dwellers coming to the sunlight and out of the mines for once. Hi. Oh, hi, Adrian. What's up? We're kind of You guys alive. are still alive? Yeah, yeah, we don't know. We've been down in a hole and then we went 
up a mountain and we're still alive somehow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Like, I'm gonna catch geez. you guys up we're, real quick. We're like, okay? I was lost as hell. We're like the only has sex left, right? Basically, your your leader Nut Daily went into an expedition into the volcano to get diamonds for you guys. I do gotta warn you though, there's like six Egyptians here on your island. So Yeah, I mean I think we yeah. passed like a couple of them, but they didn't see. We just kind of went past them. I suggested that their best chance of surviving is to head over to the Greeks. Since they did make an alliance, the cave dwellers also had one person in full diamond, which I'm guessing is their main PvP -er, while the rest of them had iron armor. This is looking pretty bleak for them. They agreed to reunite with their alliance team, the Greeks. Greeks, being the defensive team, discovered an ancient Greek structure near one of their shores, and that player enabled a world event for their island which summoned ancient golems at the front of their gates. They at first only saw one of the ancient golems and began trying to eliminate it. Boss, the boss, the boss is here. Oh my god, run! Two of them, there's two bosses. Go, go up, go up, go up. Yeah, block out. Perfect. No, 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 no. Be your bellow. Back off. No, back off. You guys hit him. Back off, back off, back off, back off. Go. Get back up. I got a back up now. It's not worth it. Don't let him kill you. We have walls. He can't break through them. He's down, get him. He's down, hit him. Nice. He didn't drop nothing. There's another. There's another one. Get back. Inside, 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 inside. There's another one. There's another one on the farm side. Then they realized there was another one on the side and tried eliminating them as well so that no Greek civilians actually died from them. To be fair, they could have just left them outside of the walls. Without casualties, the Greeks slay both of the ancient golems and proceed gearing up, unscathed by any of the chaos that Egypt and the Aztecs were going through. Peace roamed these lands, at least for now, but continues to question, what are these creatures even protecting? There was a piece of information that none of the players of each island were aware of yet, except for those that did the most killing. The server used lifesteal, which in simple terms allows you to kill somebody and steal a heart from them. The more you kill, the more health you rack up. Then it all started to make sense. Put yourselves in the shoes of the Egyptian group Scythers. If you knew lifesteal was a thing after killing a teammate of yours, why wouldn't you go on a massacre of your entire nation to gain the most hearts amongst the three nations? This must have been their plan all along, making the Egyptians the most powerful nation so far. Speaking of Egyptians, members of Eros group ended up on the shores of Greeks at last, holding the Aztecs beacon. They were holding it because they wanted to make trade. They wanted to trade in the Aztecs nation's beacon for a few pieces of TNT, giving the Aztecs a chance of winning once again. And the deal was made. I transported back to the cave dwellers and returned their beacon, giving them literally a beacon of hope and hope to surviving this battle of ancient civilizations. After giving back their beacon of hope, they found Killer Whale. Unknown to what team he belonged into, he was being eyed down by the cave dwellers. Sad took it upon himself to chase the guy, but the shark started attacking Sad, and he loop back to shore. I'm lazy, I wanna swim. The direction that the player went in was the middle island that had been opened up at phase two. This was a rough and rigid land with bone spikes and lava pools all over. Added to that, there was a rift that opened up into the underworld where dragons lived. This is also where the great ancient war would take place once there's only around two teams remaining. A random person with no armor, no tools, no nothing ended up wandering these treacherous lands. I don't know what he's doing. He's living life. The unique thing about this island was that alongside the threats, there was also these things called magma spikes at the bottom, which sometimes even contain netherite in it. Another interesting thing that was found on the middle island was a cruise ship. Not the gigantic one that was right next to the island, but a much smaller one that could carry, I'd say a team of around 5-10 members. What was found in it was remains of survivors and a note that was signed by a member of the crew within that cruise. They call themselves the Black Suns. I wonder if they're still around and where did they even come from? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, Team White Sun, still at the valley, are in search for the buried treasure and asked me, what's up? I got a question, Adrian. So do you know I got this book, yeah? At this tower. Who are you talking to, you uh -huh. schizophrenic person? No, in a, in a VC, in a VC, in a VC. <laughs> He was, he was like just staring at the sky. Oh yeah, like, Asia, Asia. Like, <laughs> I, so, you know, you know, I got this book here, mm -hmm. and it says something about something beneath this area. Is there anything beneath this area, or or, or are we just being dumb? Like for real? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, cause because I'm not the one that made that, so Ooh. I I don't know oh, what to tell you. Are you are you on Arrow's side? Well, Arrow's in Team should. Aztecs, and he annihilated Nut Daily. So, and I think they took their beacon too. Oh my God, I forgot my beacons. Oh God. <laughs> We need to 
the f guys, we need to find the beacon. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Adrian, you're sadistic for creating the system of beacons. Come on. Their hopes are slowly draining with time, and they are debating if looking down there is really worth the time and effort. Even though Arrow had their beacon, they they went down into the valley for some reason. Why would the beacon be in the valley? What the heck? If it's treasure they seek, it's about time the treasures of each island that was hidden since the beginning of the event were announced, allowing survivors with a lack of gear to take advantage and netherite all. Up. The world event was called a scavenger hunt. Each of the three ancient civilizations will receive a riddle. If the riddle is solved, it will entail the location of their island's treasure, buried by the natives that once used to live there. The ancient Egyptians received the following riddle. There lies a treasure right under the nose, right below where the god of the dead rose. The god of the dead meant Anubis, and below him was their treasure vault. The ancient Aztecs received a different riddle. Mother nature has a deadly gaze, especially right below an ashy blaze. The ashy blaze signified the volcano on their island, and right below was their own treasure vault. And lastly, the ancient Greeks were given one as well. One shall locate the highest point, to then dig under a vessel's joint. At the highest mountain in the Greek's island lied a statue to signify one of the native gods, and below that vessel lied the Greek's treasure vault. Now it was merely a race against time, and before they even began thinking about where these treasures were hiding, the Greeks soon found an enemy that had began attacking their defenses. Arrow's group of Egyptians finally got around to charging at the Greeks, catching them by surprise and due to them having that advantage, there was no plan of action on how to retaliate from the Greeks. This led them into chaos. Melo, the leader of the Greeks, was their main target. After slaying Melo, they would go on to taking the Greeks' beacon to claim their nation as part of Egypt. The sudden attack disoriented some of the Greeks, which led to some of the Greeks attacking each other by accident. The only thing Melo could do in this situation was shield up to make the hits less damaging. Melo ended up escaping via the tunnels underneath the Greek nation, which had been built as an emergency exit. Despite Melo surviving, his people did not, which left a bitter taste to any of the remaining Greek survivors. The remaining Greeks were separated, and some were even on the Aztec islands since Egypt was already done with it. They went to go locate the remaining Aztecs, if there were any left, to form a team of Greeks and Aztecs against Egypt. By the end of the day, the victory went to Eros group on the attack on the Greeks. They eliminated most of the threats that the ancient Greeks even had to offer, and carried on reaping the loot that they dropped. Besides the loss that the team Greeks saw, one of the groups within the Egypt team managed to solve the island's riddle. They mined underneath Anubis and located the treasure vault of ancient Egypt. They got themselves a nice pretty piece of netherite and some diamonds. Looks like the treasure hunters of Egypt ended up finding something after all. After that, he decided to share the treasure with his group, the White Sun. Can't say they do the same back though, and got them stacked up since they were not only going against the remains of the other teams, but even their own fellow Egyptians that decided to slaughter the majority of their population. From what I can see, they have a good chance against Arrow's group and even the Scythers. It all boils down to how good they are at actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. The cave dwellers being the Aztecs' last resistance and chance of being victorious ended up somehow deep within their island at their volcano. The original plan was to meet up with the Greeks and back them up, but I guess they changed their minds. Instead of aimlessly crossing the oceans in search for an island and risking it with the sharks and swordfishes, they were after the treasure vault hidden underneath their volcano. They explored the inner depths of the volcano as their previous leader Nut did before he fell to his death. Let's just hope the cave dwellers don't end up dealing the same fate that Nut did. The real question here was, how would they even go underneath the lava pool at the bottom? Then out of nowhere, the leader of Arrow's group, Arrow himself, was swimming up and encountered the cave dwellers for the first time. Beals, one of the members of the cave dwellers, decided to smack him off of the ledge, but Arrow survived running back and calling in reinforcements from his teammates who just invaded the Greeks. It was going to take some time before they ended up here. Unlike Arrow and his group, the cave dwellers were a little less organized and decided to sit tight for a while and figure out what their next course of action was. This gave time for the magma creatures to spawn in and start attacking them, and they soon realized maybe this netherite underneath the volcano wasn't as worth it as they thought it would have been originally. And this began the third attack within the ancient civilizations. It was Arrow's group versus the cave dwellers. Right as the cave dwellers left the volcano's inner court to evacuate and plan out their next course of action, they were met by some Egyptians. At first, the cave dwellers were trying to talk their way out of it, but unfortunately, they were massacred. One after another, they were slaughtered by Egypt's forces. Out of all of the cave dwellers, only two remained alive. Hauko, which quickly enderpearled out of there, and Sad, who snuck out while all 
all the focus was on Halco. Dude, there's only two of you still alive. <laughs> bro. <laughs> How you feeling right now, bro? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> All the eyes are on you right now. <laughs> my entire team's dead. What do yep. I, do? <laughs> I think there's another person, but they rolled out. How, yeah, Halko, he went that way. <laughs> I don't know. Bro. Both teams of Ancient Greek and Ancient Aztec are down to single digits in terms of survivors, the majority being in Team Egypt. They both had Aztecs and Greeks beacons, which would originally make them the winners, but the question that remained is how will they deal with the Egyptian Civil War? All three groups within Egypt, Team White Sun, Arrows Team, and Team Scythers were all still alive and standing. Since they aren't our united front, only one group is able to stand victorious. Checking up on the survivors of Greek, two of them decided decided it might be best to leave the islands and go far into the ocean by the borders to set up base there. The thing that they weren't aware of was that the borders were soon gonna shrink, which would lead to their demise, but I guess it's a lot more peaceful than meeting your end to Egypt. There were some Greeks that were also exploring the ruins of Aztecs to see if any loot was left behind. On a brighter note, there was a new civilization forming known as the Sky People. Remember Spawn? Well, if you didn't know, this is where the survivors got to pick which team they wanted to join. For some reason, Reason, they decided to call this place their home. They had grass, they had farms, trees, and even so much more with time passing. They were teamless and began expanding as a peaceful group. A bit of time had passed by and now the place looks like this. It's honestly quite impressive. Remember Melo of Team Greeks that escapes through the tunnels? He had ended up meeting the Sky People. After the whole fiasco, he decided to live a life of peace all on his own. Meanwhile, down in the ground, there was also a lot of chaos going down. The Civil War of Egypt was at its peak. Arrow was being hunted down by five scythers that wanted nothing more than him dead. They were full netherite with only one goal in mind, killing him. They were on boats and Arrow was far away from any of his teammates, so his main goal was to lose them and stall long enough for his teammates to arrive. It got to a point where the fight even went into the ocean, with them relentlessly chasing right behind him. Just as Arrow was waiting for reinforcements, the enemy team did the same thing, and now there were seven people chasing him. What made things even worse was at any point there could be a shark or even even a swordfish that'll turn the tides at any point. These guys do damage. Swordfish also have armor piercing, so no matter what armor you have, you will get bodied. This went on for a huge amount of time until finally, a teammate of his swooped in with a boat and carried him to one of Egypt's many shores. This is where they finally took out one of the scythers and began to retaliate against the people that chased them down. Being that both teams have been on massacres, don't forget that the lifesteal system is also here. Every kill a player gets gives them an extra one heart, so both teams probably have insane amounts of health as is. At this point, it was only Egypt and the Sky People left, since the Scythers and Arrow's team eliminated the last Aztecs and the last Greeks died to the border. Arrow was in luck since they came in pairs of ones and twos, so picking them off was a bit easier. After a few more were killed off, some of the Scythers fled into the Middle Island. The border was quickly closing in, so soon the Middle Island would be their only place they'd be able to stand in. And there it was, removing the Sky People off of their own homes, forcing them to survive in the harsh island that they were living over for so long. And soon, they'd be caught in the crossfire between the Scythers and Arrow. Every survivor ended up going down into the lower area of the middle island, where there were dragons and even magma creatures out to kill them. Is it a 2v2? There's still a couple people left to survive. Oh no. Oh no, it's still shrinking. It's still shrinking. Did they jump down? How did they even see that? They're getting attacked by a dragon. Do we just win he's now? Part, he's part of OG Egypt, so surely we've won, man. Yeah, he's he's with us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you guys won. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, something. And after all that fighting, the last team standing was Arrow's team of four, standing on their podium. Arrow also slaughtered the other three of his teammates, so he'd be crowned victor. If you made it this far, subscribe so I can get a meal today and comment suggestions for the next event.